I've been thinking a lot about Social Security lately. I do collect Social Security benefits. I'm of age. I'm 66 right now. And Social Security, I think, is a nice, it's a useful benefit. It's a little bit more money to spend. But I know that Social Security has some issues right now because the amount of money that's coming into Social Security isn't enough to pay for what they're putting out, the amount of money they're they're putting out in benefits through Social Security because people are living longer now. I think back when Social Security was first set up, the life expectancy was only 65 years old. People are living a lot longer now. So there are more people collecting Social Security benefits. Okay. Well, there's ways to fix it, ways to make Social Security, I don't want to say profitable, but at least keep them in the black so they're not running out of money and then having to go to the federal government for a big infusion of capital to keep them going year by year. Okay, one thing is there's a cap right now that b when you earn beyond a certain amount of income, then beyond that ceiling, you don't have to pay Social Security taxes on that income. I say raise the ceiling. It'll bring in more money to Social Security. And those wealthy people who are earning that kind of income, they're going to benefit through trickle-up economics. If people in the lower stratums of income have the money they need to pay their bills, put food on the table, maybe buy a few nice things once in a while, that's money going into the economy. That stimulates the economy. When the economy is doing well, who benefits the most? The wealthiest Americans, because they have money invested in the stock market, for example, or they own properties and they benefit. So if they're going to benefit anyways, then let them pay a little bit more tax on those benefits. So that's one thing. Another thing I would change, and it doesn't bring in a lot of money into Social Security, but I think it's great for the economy and, say, collaterally, it benefits Social Security. Right now, employees pay 50% of their Social Security tax obligation and employers contribute the other 50%. And that works well for people who are not earning a lot of money. It reduces their taxes and it helps. Social Security. Money's coming into Social Security. I would change that such that when someone say they reach $50,000 a year income, then say for every five or $10,000 above 50000 let them pay a higher percentage of their Social Security tax obligation such that when they get up to $100,000 income or more, let them pay 100% of their Social Security tax obligation. And at that level, their employer doesn't pay, doesn't contribute to their Social Security. It doesn't bring in immediately the money into Social Security, but it, what it does do is it helps these businesses, large businesses that have a lot of employees, many of whom earn more than 50000 per year, some above, well above, hundred thousand dollars per year it helps those corporations those businesses those industries by reducing their tax liability that's more money for them to invest in their industry in their business possibly hiring more people now you've got more people working and they're paying social security so that's more money going into social security reduces unemployment boosts the economy Everybody does better. So that's something I think that would really, really help this country. And that paying 100% of their Social Security tax obligation wouldn't be an unfair burden on them because there are already a lot of Americans who are paying 100% of their Social Security taxes because they're self-employed. See, they don't have an employer paying 50%. They are their own employer. So they're paying their 50% obligation as an employee and also 50% as their own employer. They're paying already 100%. And 
there's no news. I've never seen anything in the news about how poorly those people are doing having to pay that additional Social Security tax. So I definitely believe that people who are earning an income above $100,000 working for an employer could easily afford to pay 100% of their, in their Social Security tax obligation at that income level. Now, something else third idea of mine that I think could really work. This is, I think, the best idea. I don't know whether it's doable or not. Maybe there are laws that prevent this. We'll change the laws. And by the way, this is something the, the Democrats should be working on now. Rather than being the party of no to Trump and the Republicans, they should be working on ideas now so that when they take over, control of the Senate and possibly the House of Representatives, and it looks like 2018 could be a pretty good year for Democrats, they're ready with new programs to stimulate the economy and benefit the people. So here's an idea. We all know what an IRA is. It's an, um, an, a retirement account, individual retirement account, where people can voluntarily contribute some of their income into an IRA that's put aside for them until they retire. The nice part about an IRA is it's pre-tax. In other words, if you put in, say, $500, or $1,000, whatever, into an IRA, that money comes out of your income before the, ta the taxes are calculated, your income tax. So that money goes into the IRA, and then whatever's left over in your income, that's what you pay taxes on. So that's like... You don't pay taxes on that money yet. But when you withdraw from your IRA in retirement, that's when you pay income tax on it. Consider it like a deferred income tax program on that income. Well, what if the Social Security were to set up something like a voluntary Social Security extra benefit program or retirement benefit program, an extra program that people could voluntarily invest some of their income in and let it go in pre-tax, keep it safe, that unlike a lot of these retirement programs that are indexed to the stock market such that when the stock market goes down, when it suffers a major loss, a lot of retirement people lose retirement income because the stock market has gone down and their IRAs are linked to the stock market. Instead, keep it protected so that it's not indexed to the um, stock market. Therefore, keep that money safe. Let it earn a modest interest, maybe what people would have gotten with, socials, with um, savings bonds. Not a big uh, investment return on that, but modest. Let it, let it be something similar to that. However, to make it really desirable, to, to create the incentive for people wanting to put money into a voluntary Social Security extra benefit program, set it up so that if they leave the money in there until their full retirement age, so like for example, for me it's 66, that's my full retirement age, if they don't withdraw any of that money, like early, 62 years old you can collect right now, you can collect Social Security, at least in my age group, but if they leave it in there for their full retirement age, then allow them to deduct, withdraw from that account up to say 10% per year of the balance that's in there and let that be tax-free. So in essence, what it becomes is double tax-free income. The money that goes in to the program when they're working isn't taxed. And if they don't withdraw it until full retirement age, then when they withdraw that money, it's also not taxed, that amount. Anything above that amount is taxed, or if they withdraw early, it's penalized, whatever, just like in an IRA. That idea of saving money on taxes, where they don't have to pay taxes at all on that income, that could be the incentive to get people to invest money in a Social Security benefit program. It's protected. It's not linked to the stock exchange. Let it be insured. Let FDIC insure that money so they know the money is safe. Let it be double tax free so they don't have to pay taxes on that income. And I think you could get people interested in putting money into such a program. And that would be more money coming into Social Security. 
And if you've got young people doing it now in their 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever, investing now, they're not going to collect for 20, 30, maybe 40 years from now. That's all that money going into Social Security, funding Social Security, creating a nice nest egg for the future for them. That could save Social Security, I think, and really help out our economy. Those ideas, all three of those ideas, I think really could benefit our economy, keep our economy going well, and keep everybody with a comfortable income, most people with a comfortable income. There's still the poverty level. So those are my ideas for saving Social Security just in time as a jet is going overhead. And those of you who are listening, if you think this is a good idea, send the link to this video to your state's congresspersons whether in the Senate or the House of Representatives, tell them about this video. Tell them to watch this video and tell them, especially if they're Democrats, don't become the party of no. Now, start thinking about the future. Start thinking about 2018 and start working on this social program like this to save Social Security. And maybe between my ideas and theirs, they might come up with some good ideas to save Social Security.